Uh, 08 financial crisis. Uh, the panel, I think, would agree that there was a lot of families that were hurt, a lot of families who lost their home. I don't think anyone disagrees with that on the panel, correct? And to the panel, was every family who was hurt in the OA crisis made whole? Did everyone get reimbursed for their losses in the OA crisis, Professor Min? Uh, the answer is no, but I would argue. Oh, no, you're right. That's a good, good answer. They, they were not made whole. And so is it fair to say that instead of directing settlement money to victims of the OA crisis, the DOJ decided to take it away from victims and send it to third-party non-victim groups. Do you agree with that, Professor Min? Uh, no, I do not. So uh, the money that went to third-party non-victim groups wasn't taken away from victims? I, I'm not sure how you'd craft a settlement that helps out the aggrieved homeowners other than through community groups that directly interface with them. Well, there's people who's lost home. The people, people have lost homes. They've been foreclosed upon. Um, I hear the ranking member talk about that all the time. Sure. We yeah. know who they are in our communities. Well, Why that, couldn't that money be directed to the actual victims of the OA crisis? Sure. And I believe that's what the money is intended to do. It's no, it's not. It's going to third party groups. It's if for foreclosure let me prevention. Ask you this. I'm sorry? If, let me ask you this. Do you think it's appropriate? as you craft this settlement, that you craft it behind closed doors in a way to make sure that the money goes to left-leaning community activist groups instead of conservative groups. Do you think that would be a good public policy? Well, I think that's actually a flawed premise because there that's were a number question. of different groups that were allowed to be given would money. Would that be a good public policy? No, but there were conservative groups that were okay. part of that list as so well. So would, would you be surprised that um, if later on you learn that there are emails from HUD and the DOJ that actually lay out the fact that they were structuring this deal to make sure that liberals got the money and not conservatives. And if you heard that, you would be offended, wouldn't you? I would be. I don't think that's what happened. And so if there's a deal that's structured like this, do you think there should be transparency to the panel? Do we think that the American people should be able to see the correspondence uh, between the DOJ and HUD and how they determined what agency, what, not agency, what third party activist group got the money. Should that be disclosed to the American people, Professor Krantz, Rosencrantz? Yes, Chen. Dr. Larkin, do you think that the American people should be able to see through their Congress the documents uh, surrounding this settlement? Yes. Uh, Mr. Gray? <laughs> yes, and um, how the money is to be uh, ultimately dispersed is really up to you, not to, uh, not to a prosecutor. We're going to come back to that in a second. I agree with you. Professor Min, do you think that we should be able to see? Of course. And okay. I think the so fact that the, we're discussing this means yeah. that it was would, released. Would the panel by chance be surprised that we've actually asked on this committee and this subcommittee for the documents from the Department of Justice and HUD? And do you think that they've actually provided those documents to Congress? Take a guess. I would not be surprised uh, by the fact that they refuse to turn them over. They refuse to turn them over. So not only do you have a settlement uh, that was done behind closed doors that sends money in, 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 instead uh, of to victims and or the Treasury, sends it to third party activist groups, and the Congress can't see the documentation surrounding that settlement. Does that, does that offend anybody's sensibilities on the panel? <clears throat> it offends mine, but I think it, more importantly uh, than what I think, the Comptroller General has taken the uh, view that all settlements must relate to the underlying violation, which, which principle was totally ignored in this, uh, in this series of, uh, of settlements. Professor Rosencrantz, I think you heard Professor Min's commentary and legal analysis on the DOJ settlements. Do you agree with his analysis? I don't agree with his analysis. I'd just make one point. He uh, points out that um, uh, arguably both sides win. The banks are happy and the Department of Justice is happy, but uh, that's not the separation of powers standard. That's often true in separation of powers uh, problems, and um, it's, you know, it's really Congress here and thus the American people who are the aggrieved party. The fact that the bank is not here complaining doesn't actually prove a point. They paid one way or the other, right? Mm. And so instead of appropriating money, making decisions through the Congress, we have the Department of Justice lawyers and HUD. Um, and I'll just make one note. My time is almost up. But um, one of the organizations that received money was NeighborWorks. Uh, board member Helen uh, Kanavosky, uh is general counsel 
of the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. So she's a board member of NeighborWorks, but also general counsel at HUD, and they got money. Does that offend your sensibilities, Professor Min? I'm not sure what the question is, uh, what, what, the, what, what the offending sensibility point is. My, my time has expired.